In regular life, we often don't get a second chance to make up for a bad first impression. And people make first impressions in the first few seconds after they meet you. The rest of the time is spent in trying to make sense or trying to find reasons why that first impression makes sense, even when that first impression might have been wrong. Now, in dating scenarios, a lot of men sometimes do things unknowingly that end up turning women off. And in this video, we are going to look at some of the mistakes that men make early on in the stages of dating a woman, of seeing a woman they find sexually attractive, that might turn that woman off. And if you're one of these men who find themselves going out on first dates with one woman and then you don't hear back from her or there are no dates that follow after that, you might be making some of these mistakes unknowingly. My name is Evans Claude Sabi. I'm a fitness trainer, nutrition coach, dating and relationship coach as well. In this channel, I offer insights on how you can live a healthier and fit lifestyle and while at the same time cultivating meaningful relationships with women you find sexually attractive. So if there's topics of interest to you, consider subscribing and head over to my website to learn more about what I do. Now let's get straight into it. The first mistake that I see a lot of men make in the beginning is wanting to be friends with a woman before they reveal their true intentions. I am sure you've heard of people who have made these relationship goals kind of relationships by being friends in the beginning, but that is not something that I recommend. And you might be a man who says that, hey Evans, I just wanna be nice to this woman. I just wanna be her friends and make her feel comfortable and all that. I hear you, but if you're truly honest with yourself. The main reason why most men will take the friendship route, not because they're nice and they want to ease this woman into uh, a possible relationship or going out together, but they are not courageous enough. They are scared of being rejected. That is often the intention that comes behind these friendships. And as much as you as a man might think you're uh, playing it cool while trying to cultivate this relationship before you actually ask her out, most women do know when a man's intentions are somewhere else compared to what they say. And this also leads to why I do not encourage this behavior. Most times when women know that what you want is one thing, but what you're expressing through your actions is another, or your words is another thing, they start not trusting your energy. They start not trusting who you are as a person. And yes, you might be a good friend. You might be someone who is always there for her. But at the end of the day, you're also going to be a person whom she's not going to trust with her vulnerability, with wanting to connect with you sexually. I can understand why some men might want to take this friendship route in the beginning. Uh, because we live in this world that we hear a lot where men are being told you're too direct. So they say, you know what? I'm going to uh, hold back my true intentions. I'm going to not be as direct in order to please the society. But at the end of the day, there are some behaviors that lend themselves, as I mentioned earlier, to lack of trust, even when the society says they want one thing. So I want you to understand that revealing your true intentions, especially to a woman whom you're starting to see and you know you want to pursue something romantic, is key. At the end of the day, it's going to not only not waste your time, it's also going to be courageous and vulnerable in a way that's going to allow you to connect with this woman romantically at some point if she ends up wanting to have that kind of relationship with you. And the second mistake that I see happening quite a lot out there is men being overly available in the early stages of dating a woman. I understand there is this urge to want to spend as much time with someone whom you've just uh, started to interact with in a romantic way. But at the end of the day, if we are looking at a long-term kind of perspective, it actually doesn't benefit us by being overly available. When I say being overly available, I mean you chatting on the phone quite a lot, you spending, um, let's say, your entire time while you're supposed to be working and doing other things that are more meaningful, that are also meaningful in your life, are spent trying to be accessible to this new woman that you're seeing. And you might think that this is the thing that you should be doing, especially in the early stages. But when you look at human behavior, we have this tendency to devalue what's always there. So to a woman, when you're overly there, you're forever present in her life, in her space, even though it's not physically, 
it subconsciously communicates to her that you're someone of low value. Let's say if you're a man who normally goes to bed around 10 p.m. and because you're seeing this new woman, you are up chatting till two in the morning, subconsciously, you're breaking your own boundaries. You're letting this woman walk past what you would normally do. Now, it might seem nice and cute in the beginning, but over the long run, it teaches her, it conditions her that you lack boundaries. It actually sets them up for not respecting you. And another aspect to be mindful of here is that as much as this might be exciting in the beginning, when you are uh, overly available to a woman, it communicates to her that you don't have anything else going on around your life. She might just start subconsciously thinking and evaluating these things without even herself knowing that she's doing this. So in turn, that turns her off in a fact that it's going to tell her, you know what, this guy has nothing going on in his life, that's why he's overly available. Another thing here to keep in mind on this overly available aspect of uh, mistakes that most men make is that it takes away the space of her thinking about you, about what you might be doing, what you might be thinking, and it puts a woman in a space where she knows each and everything about you, what has happened throughout the week it doesn't entice her to even want to show up or even be excited about a possibility of going out on another date with you uh, if you guys have gone out already. The third mistake that I see a lot of men make is they overshare about themselves on the first date or the first few dates. And the key takeaway here is when a woman, let's say, asks you, hey, tell me something about yourself. And most men will unload their entire biography on that first date or during the second date. It might take away that interest or that urge to keep coming back on the second, third date or even want a relationship in the long run where she asks herself, what is it that I'm going to find out about this guy? So when you uh, reveal too much too soon, it actually doesn't serve you well. And I know dating is about going out with someone, learning about their interests, learning about uh, all these unique things about them. But that also has to happen over a period of time. Not on the first date or within the first three days or five dates, it has to happen over the span of that particular relationship or uh, however long you two end up seeing one another. So avoid sharing too much about yourself too soon to a woman because that takes away the interest of what else might she find out in the future because that's a good reason for them to keep coming back for them to be intrigued of what might be happening in the second date third date or even months and years to come after that. And just a quick reminder here midway through this, if you're finding this video informative, if you're liking the content, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me get this video to most people who might also need this information. So give it a subscribe and a like and even comment what other questions you might have in the comment section below. All right, let's get on with the video. The fourth mistake that I see happening quite a lot out there is men wanting to know where they stand with a woman after a couple of dates, one, three dates, or even five dates in the early stages of seeing one another. And yes, you might be in that space where you're starting to like this woman, even uh, actually starting to fall in love with this woman. And internally, you start feeling this urge to want to know, does she feel the same about you? Does she like you? Does she love you? And all these emotions want closure. I don't want to say closure, but want certainty. We need to know where she stands, how she feels about us. And this ends up actually turning a woman off, especially if she's not sure about where she stands with you. In these early stages, questions like, hey, do you love me? are out of the question. Questions like, do you like me? are not even supposed to be asked because the fact that she's on a date with you already communicate her interest of wanting to spend time, of wanting to have fun, of wanting to get to know one another. And if you end up asking a woman during this period where you're just getting to know one another about where you two stand, it actually kind of forces her to have a decision 
about where this relationship might be going even when she's not ready. She feels like she's been cornered to choose the trajectory of where that relationship should go. This early stage is a time for you to get to know one another, to have fun, to create these connections that will eventually lead to something of more long-term if that's what both of you want. And of course, this is dating that could lead maybe to a relationship. Uh, certainty is not one of those things you should be looking for. And at the same time, a man's sense, a man's acceptance of uncertainty will lead to him being relaxed. And at the end of the day, if a man is relaxed, enjoying getting to know a woman, the woman is going to feel comfortable in just uh, exploring things and see how they're going to go or just see where that relationship could go. And another mistake that I see happening quite a lot out there, and I think we're at number five at this point, is men being indecisive and uncertain with their plans during dates. Okay, now let's say if a woman has agreed to go out with you, this gorgeous, amazing woman that you've been looking forward to spending time with, and you go pick her up and she asks you, where are we going? And you never made a plan, all right? I see this happening quite a lot. Oh, during the process of making or setting up that date, you start asking a woman, where do you want to go? When a woman wants to go out on a date, she doesn't want to be put in a space where she has to be making decisions on where you guys are gonna go or what you guys are going to do. Most women, and they'll say, uh, confidently say 90 plus percent of women, want to show up, look good, feel comfortable around a man, and let a man take the lead in that date. And this is where you having that uh, assertiveness in how you show up, and this is where you having a clear decision making of, hey, I'm going to take her to this place and this place, or just having different options in your head of where you could go, just in case one of those places uh, kind of doesn't work, or if it's a restaurant and it's closed for some reason. So keep in mind, a woman doesn't want to be making decisions on where to go for dates. She wants to show up and know that she can just enjoy your presence, enjoy your energy, and have a good time. And you as a man who is inviting this woman on a date should know where you two are going. However, if a woman asks you, hey, what should I wear? Is it going to be more of a casual environment or should I be dressy? Uh, that's where you need to have a clear answer. And again, this is where certainty falls. You can come up and say, you know what? Just something casual will do for this one. And she will go back and figure things out and you two can go and enjoy on an amazing date. And a woman might say, hey, there is this restaurant or this spot that I would love to take us. And you as a man who is wanting to spend time with her can be flexible, even though you already had a few places in mind of where you wanted to take her, but you can still have that flexibility on other suggestions that she might bring. The mistake number six that I see being made quite a lot out there is men having this need to impress women. Impressing is one of those things that if we are not aware of the impact that it has, it can actually go way too far, uh, further than it needs to go. So let's say if you're a man going out on a date with a woman and you're unsure, you're, you're nervous, natural thing to happen there is, hey, let me try to talk or tell her about, let's say, this person that I know, this interesting event that I went to, or these uh, cool things that I've done in my life, all this in order to kind of break out of that nervousness. What we fail to realize in this moment is attraction happens when we listen. You're going out with a woman you already know that you find her attractive. That's done. Uh, you're trying to create an environment where there can be that connection where she finds you attractive, you find her attractive, boom you see what happens next. But when you get in this space of wanting to impress her, you start talking too much, you stop listening, you stop giving her the space to express herself. Her connection to you deepens, her attraction to you deepens when she starts talking about herself. This is something about human nature where we love to talk about ourselves, all right? And you as a man, when knowing this, you need to give a woman the space where she can express herself, where she can talk about herself, and you sit back and listen. The more she feels like she is safe to talk about things she loves or experiences, experiences she enjoyed, it allows her to connect deeper with you, and over the long run, if you become a good listener, it doesn't mean that you should not express or 
convey your emotions to her or your excitement about things that you have happening in your life. It just means that you take more of a listener role and you stop wanting to impress her. And this urge to impress people just leaves a bad taste in whoever is on the receiving end of it. So keep this in mind when you feel nervous. Um, and I actually got this from Mark Mason. Uh, he's a writer and I think it was one of his books called Models. And he talks about this in the sense of not wanting to impress women, but asking yourself, how can this woman impress me? And once you do that, I know it kind of so sounds cocky, but when you ask yourself, how can this woman impress me? It actually puts you in a space where you sit back and ask yourself, what amazing things can I learn about this person? You stop being very curious, so your questions are very personal. Uh, they come from a place of uh, what are the cool things that this woman either knows or does or she's been in that I will find very fascinating. And these same questions, these same topics, are what will bring out those good feelings, amazing conversations that will connect you to that woman that you're on a date with. So avoid the need to impress women. And if you feel nervous, go in the other space of saying, how can this woman impress me? Just a warning though. Most times when you give a woman this space of uh, expressing yourself and connecting with you and everything, and if it happens too quick, you might fall victim to the other thing where she's revealing too much and you feel like you don't have anything more to find out about her because you are such a good listener and you let her just talk and express herself and you might fall victim to that. I just wanted to kind of put that out there. The last mistake that I see happening a lot out there that I want to touch on is men making their women their one and only friends. Meeting someone who is attractive, who wants to spend time with you, who not only satisfies your companion uh, companionship needs, but also your sexual desires and needs and connection can be uh, very magnetic. You might want to uh, make her your everything. You hear people say, my woman or my girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, or whatever is my best friend, my confidant, my therapist, because I vent a lot to them about everything. They know everything about me. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because you know there is a healthy level of absence that we need to cultivate, especially in the early stages of seeing someone, because it's very easy for us to fall in the trap of creating this bubble between us, uh, between let's say you and the woman that you're seeing. And in the long run, it kind of separates all the other relationships that you might have had in the beginning. So you might have had friends and you'll stop spending time with them at all. Family goes off the, off the rails. Even work sometimes starts going down. So when you're seeing someone new, avoid making them your one and only and try to spend time in the other friendships that you have, in the other relationships, if it's family, work, and whatnot, because we need more than just sexual partners to satisfy our companion needs. We need a village's worth of relationship to satisfy us and feel like we're truly connected. Something that one person uh, should not have to bear. It's, uh, it's a burden when only one person needs to provide all these feelings and all these fulfillments in a relationship in our lives. So with that being said, it's okay to spend less time with your friends, it's okay to spend less time with your family because you have, uh, you're putting more investment in this new person that you're seeing, in this new woman that you're seeing romantically, but it's not okay to completely cut ties with those other relationships that you had uh, before you met her. To end this, I want to say, there's a lot of things in dating, in relationships that we do not have control over. How the other person feels and things like that. But there are also these very minuscule details about ourselves that we have control over, about our excitement towards a new partner, about our, uh, how we show up, our presence towards someone, or the things that we choose to put a spotlight on during a date. Those are things that we have control over and we can make them or we can um, emphasize on having them bring positive aspects that we want to see in a new person that we have just started going out with. So keep that in mind. If things work out, perfectly fine. But also if you're seeing a woman and things do not work out, that's also fine as well. It just means it was not meant to be at that particular time. And 
Don't lose your enthusiasm for life. Don't lose your enthusiasm for wanting to date women and explore experiences, enriching experiences that might be out there. So thank you very much for sticking around to the end. If you want more content, head over to my website. I will leave it in the description below and subscribe to the channel for more content that's coming up on a regular basis. Thank you very much. And as always, leave abundantly.